Hey guys, Sunday afternoon, working in the garage, hanging some axes. Um, this is one that I just did the other day. This is an Osage Orange Cross Wedge on a Sager 1941 for my good customer, Houston Evans out of California. So I've been getting a lot of questions about how I do cross wedges. I think everybody pretty much does it the same way, but for a novice, this could be kind of a mystery and it could be kind of challenging. Um, and there's a lot of ways that it can kind of go sideways. So uh, what I'm going to do is really quickly try to show you what I do when I'm cross wedging an ax. All right. So the first step obviously is to cut your kerf. Um, you need not just your center kerf, obviously you need a side kerf. I cut this kerf to the same length, just about the same length as the center kerf which comes down about two thirds the length of the ax head itself, all right? Now, if you go too wide with this wedge um, and you haven't widened the kerf to begin with, I have had a couple handles split down here. So depending on the grain orientation of the handle, you need to be careful. Um, really, the only reason I used to do cross wedges was when the wood on the eye of the head on the ax didn't extend to the corner of the eye. So what I wanted to do is extend this out to push this eye wood out further. Now in this case, this is actually a wonky ax because um, the way that someone originally hung this ax and the way that it was actually forged is that unfortunately, it's a little larger at the bottom than it is at the top. So I just did a video on how to widen your kerfs using a Makita hand sander. Now, so what I did is I just widened these kerfs. This ax is for display purposes only. It's not going to be used. So I'm not worried right now about the issue of the top of the eye being the smaller side than uh, the bottom. So just let's forget about that and move on to how we do a cross wedge. Okay, so what I do is I measure my wedge first and by what I try to do is I insert it a little bit in here like this and then what I do is I trim the width of the wedge but I also on a double bit or even on a single bit I angle these corners so and that angling goes all the way down the length of the wedge okay so you're not peeling off all that extra corner wood here, which impairs how smoothly the wedge goes in and sometimes how deep it goes in. Um, it also can cause other uh, stress risers and in my opinion, cracking of this wedge when you're trying to install it. So what I do first is I measure the wedge, I mark it with a pencil, I then go ahead and I go to my belt sander. Um, now I use a bench mounted, uh, Kalamazoo, one by 42, that rhymes, belt sander. And basically what we're doing is we're just shaping this wedge on the belt sander and giving it a little bit of point on both sides, all right? So that's easy. So we're gonna install that down in there just far enough, just past the metal on the eye, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is whenever I wanna, whenever I get a wedge started, I wanna make sure that it's actually past the edge of the eye so that it doesn't start to mushroom on the edge here. Now, one thing you will maybe notice is that I also taper my wedges just slightly. So I actually make it slightly narrower on this bottom edge than it is on the top, okay? Um, that's to help it go in, but it also follows the taper of the eye of the ax typically you know in this case it won't but it typically does so we're going to slide that in there by hand about as far as it goes sometimes i just give them a little tap okay but you have to be careful especially when you're rusting it in the vise that you don't push the eye wood out of the head okay now the next step what i do is i measure my cross wedges and the way i do it typically is i use my uh caliper okay a digital caliper and what i'll do oops sorry for moving around on you there what i'll do is this is my digital caliper i'm going to reset it okay 
and I basically use this end to measure the width of my cross wedge, okay? And on this one, I kind of lucked out. It's pretty much exactly the same on both sides, okay? And if you can see that, it reads 7.57 millimeters. Okay, so just to speed this process up, I've already cut my other walnut uh, cross wedges, and here they are, all right? They're basically the same length as my existing center wedge. The cross wedge goes in in this fashion because the goal with the cross wedge is to expand this eye wood in either direction. Now I don't, in this case, because this is already bottomed out here, I don't really expect these to go in very far, I'll be perfectly honest with you. But again, we're dealing with a different type of situation here um, and a display axe, not an actual functional axe. Now normally, this eye wood here would maybe be coming up a little bit short and this wedge would expand that left and right and it would make it fit tighter, okay? But I like get a lot of questions about what's the process, what's the steps, right? So we got our other, our other uh, wedge here and we're gonna slide it into place. Now, I do wanna show you something. Now, it's really important that this edge of this wedge be flat. Oh, I'll get you in focus here. Flat so that it lays tight against that center wedge. If this is not completely flat, it's going to flare out and it's going to break off, okay? So you need it to be flat. You'll also notice that one's not going in all the way, okay? So when I cut these, I did already do a little bit of sanding and I think I reversed them. So there we go. That one goes there and this one goes there, all right? So the next step for me is normally I, I would, I'm gonna glue these, okay? But I do wanna get these started. So I'll just tap them a little bit Okay, so they're started now, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue up the wedges and then we're gonna pound them in. So I apply glue to all surfaces, all right? Now there is kind of a handy uh, dandy uh, gluing tool that they sell. I don't know if you guys have seen these, but you put a little bit of glue on here and you spread it around with this tool. And what's kind of cool about it is the glue dries on this and you just go like this and all the old glue just comes right off. It's silicone, so the glue doesn't stick to it. Pretty cool. And then you have a paddle end on this end um, and you can work glue down into the kerf. But um, anyways, guys, that is how I install cross wedges and how I cut them and shape them and, and do that. So hopefully you found that informative and interesting. Um, you guys have an awesome day. Thanks.